everyone. Welcome to Poor Painting with Ron. I hope you've all been well. Well, today I'm excited to try something new. In the mail the other day, I got some really nice um, 3D printed split cups. Um, I got uh, a five bay one and uh, a three bay one. I just got them off eBay. Each one holds 600 mils of paint, so that's enough to do a, a larger size canvas, which is great. Now, um, I'm going to use a five bay one today, go all out. Uh, I'll show you the colors in a second that I'm going to use, but I'm going to be doing it today on this 40 centimeter by 50 centimeter thin edge canvas. And as usual, I've prepared the back just with some painter's tape and some giant push pins. Uh, to keep it off the surface of the table. Now my canvas was a bit loose so I just sprayed a bit of water on the back and blow dried it to stretch out the canvas a little bit. You wanted a nice drumming sound when you tap it then you know it, it's tight enough to use. Now um, I wasn't quite sure of the consistency I was going to do today. Some videos I've seen on YouTube use a, a, a thicker than normal mix and others use a, a thinner than normal mix. So today I'm going to use a thinner than normal mix just to see what happens. So I've picked out all Montmartre colours today. Uh, now to get my 600 grams, and I'll probably need it all to cover this canvas, I use about 50 grams of each colour. And then to get the, the thin side, I added 60 grams of Floetrol and a little bit of water. So the colours I use today are this um, Montmartre Brilliant Red, and then the Medium Yellow from Montmartre, some nice magenta, some phthalo blue, and some purple. And then, because I wasn't too sure if my paint was going to reach the edges of this canvas today, I've mixed up some black just to cover around the outside to help my paint slide over the canvas a little bit. Well, you'll see the consistency in a bit. So I was going for some bright rainbow looking patterns today in this painting. So I'm excited to see how it turns out. So let's get started. Right, we're back. These are my colours all mixed up, ready to go. Now space is at a bit of a premium today because I've got a big huge painting drying on this half of my table. So it's a bit squeezy, but I'm sure we can manage. All right, now I mixed up a bit more of the magenta because that's going to go into the biggest space in my cup today. Um, and the consistency, I've kept it fairly thin. I get a small mound when I dribble it off the spoon and if I do a, a twirly design with the paint the mound stays there for about two seconds or so. I didn't want to do it too thin because the colours would just blend too much together but I do maybe want some nice like feathery sorts of shapes so I didn't want it too thick either. The thicker it is the less the colours are going to combine with each other. Or so that's a theory anyway. So that's the order I'm going to put it into the cup today. So we'll do that first and then I'll bring in my canvas and we'll get started. Hmm, This is going to be fun to clean afterwards. Now there's a few threads and bits and pieces left over from the printing that I can't get out. So I'm hoping they won't end up in my painting. We'll see. All right. Now I'll start off with yellow down this side. Now if I've measured right, I should be able to fill it up to the top. There we go. A little bit left over. I can squeeze in a bit more. Some yellow. And then I'll do the red. Oh, I'll just, just have enough. There we go. 
go. Now, I think it was wise to mix up the extra magenta. Yes, I mixed up 70 grams of magenta instead of 50 like the other colours. And then the blue, I mix up the same amount of blue as I did the red, so technically it should fit. just paint and flow troll and a bit of water. I don't want cells so I'm not using silicon. Right, a bit of purple left over and a little bit of yellow. All right now I'll just put these aside and I'll bring in my canvas. And the black, because I'll need that. I'll put the black over here. Put that aside. Now I'm going to be using my spinner today because I want to turn it around a little bit as I um, put the paint on. And it's easier turning the canvas than it is twisting the cut. So I'll just put a board on top of my cake spinner. Hopefully you can see that. Just holds the canvas a bit better. And then I just put the canvas on the top. And see, you can just turn it around. And it's much easier turning the canvas that way than twisting your arm around with the cup in it. Or well, that's what I think anyway. Okay. Ooh, scary. All right, I'll sort of start over here and wander around. I don't really have a plan. But I'll go reasonably slowly. You could do ring pause as well if you want to. I'm just starting off with this simple one today. Just to see what happens. A 
because the thinner you do your paint, the finer the, the feathery effect may end up being in your painting. Okay, we're getting to the end. I'll probably lose some of this paint. That's most of it. All right. Well, that looks interesting. Now I'll put my black. Around the outside. And I'll spread it out with my palette knife. Just helps the paint slide. Don't necessarily want black in my painting. Now I've seen people do ring pours and then spin out their pour. I'd like to try that one time, but today I'm just going to be tilting to get the design that will happen. I don't really know what will happen. That's half the fun of paint pouring or pour painting or however you choose to say it. get rid of my spinner in a bit. Okay. The black goes everywhere. Spinner. I like the design. I hope it stretches out nicely. And I hope I have enough paint to cover the canvas. It's a bit of a worry. Okay, putting that black on there just helps the paint slide rather than the paint rolling over itself. This one. Whoa. Corners, I always find corners hard. Now we'll go down to this corner. See how nicely it slides over the black. Right, now we'll go to this corner. That side. All right. Uh, 
I still may have too much paint on the canvas. <laughs> I thought I wouldn't have enough. Okay, I'll get I'll lose some more. I do want to stretch out that, that feathering a bit more. So we'll take some off here. And come back. I'll take some more off this corner. this design looking okay not too bad I might take a bit more off this corner then bring it back all right well I did have enough paint after all I could even perhaps do with a bit less all right what do you think I hope you can see it The yellow, yeah, the yellow has interacted a bit with um, the purple and you get a bit of a, a yucky sort of green colour, which I don't particularly like. But yeah, I think that's pretty interesting for the first try. I may not use yellow again, perhaps a little bright for me, maybe, maybe gold gold may be better perhaps I know but that that's cool certainly some some interesting effects effects happening there anyway I'll bring you in for a closer look I know here's the the finished painting I think it's interesting for my very first attempt at a split cut pour I certainly need to practice but it does create some interesting designs and I'm, I'm not too fussed about some of the yellow I do like what's happened in the middle here with that feathering I think if the the paint would have been a bit thinner I would have got much finer lines off in the feathers the thicker your paint is, I imagine the thicker those lines will be. It certainly creates interesting effects, this split cut pour. So what did you think of that one? I think it turned out rather interesting. Certainly things I can improve on, but my head is buzzing with some creative ideas that I'd like to try in future videos. Um, is that a technique you'd like to try yourself? Give it a go. It doesn't seem to be that difficult. Have a look on eBay. See if you can find some split cups. There's plenty of people selling those. Lots of different ones available. Now, as usual, if you like what you saw today, please um, press the like button. And if you'd like to see more of my content, please take a moment to subscribe. So I hope you have a good week ahead and happy painting.